welcome back. So China cuts triple R's, but is something bubbling in space in terms of what's going on in the FX markets? Let's talk to Eric Liu, head of research at Vonda Securities. Eric, very nice to see you. Good to see you, Chloe. So uh, what do you think is really going on in the FX space? Because you think that there could be some uh, interesting things that might uh, roll on along, along the way. Yeah, I, I think clearly China is concerned uh, about how strong the currency has been because of the U.S. peg uh, relative to, to their trading competitors in, in the last few years. But I think what we saw this week was they have greater concerns as well. And, and one of them is, is the capital outflows that we've been seeing in, in the fourth quarter of last year. Mm. And so it's just an order of magnitude. And I, I think the government uh, uh, is concerned about growth. And, and so the triple R cut for us signaled that there were, there were more important things on the plate than, than simply the currency. And that's liquidity in the domestic market. Yeah. So what in terms of positioning do you see that indicates that they'll do something? Uh, well, I, I, I think, uh, you know, in, in China, I, I think there has been a lot of uh, exuberance, I guess, built into the markets. And you saw that at the end of last year mm. uh, with the rise in, in A shares and eight shares in, in December. Yeah. But I, I think it's, it's, it's telling what, uh, what the market reaction has been this time around. If you saw yesterday, the, you know, uh, the Shanghai comp was, was down and, and eight shares were, were up just a little. And so, what you're seeing really, and this isn't just the case in China, it's, it's across the globe, I think, is, is diminishing marginal returns from, from monetary easing. And, and China was just, I think, uh, the latest symptom of that. Yeah, but why isn't there the hoopla that we used to see whenever the PBOC used to ease? What's, what's going on? I, like, like I said, I, I, think, uh, I think a lot was baked in last year when, uh, when they cut the lending rate in November. Um, and I, I, I think there was a greater understanding uh, amongst most market participants that central banks are, are not the panacea for, for, for global growth. And, and so uh, I think markets are just less willing than they were a year ago or two years ago to reward. reward then do you activity. agree with Steve's view that uh, now that we're in such a negative environment worldwide, that equities uh, probably need to get another leg up? And that's probably the only place to go. I think so. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. And I think uh, particularly this, this bubble that we're seeing in, in bond markets, um, has finally been challenged, and, and that's something that, that we pointed out uh, earlier this week in, in Japan. Uh, you've seen a couple really bad uh, bond auctions by the, by the government, and Japan is really they're sort of on the the knife's edge of this, just because as a as a they're the the, the, the DM big DM liquid market with the, the lowest nominal rates, and so mm. you saw Japanese uh, government bond yields start coming up earlier in, in January. Uh, and I, I think uh, you're going to see the same in, in the U.S. and in Germany. Mm. Do you think that, um, I mean, the one thing that's been missing in this sort of alchemy created by the central banks is, uh, is reform as pushed by our esteemed political leaders. They haven't achieved that, and they show a significant disinclination to do that because obviously electorally it's unpopular. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, in order for that to continue, not least of which is in the Eurozone, reform needs to be back on the agenda big time. We need to see it in Japan. We need to see it to a degree in China. Obviously, we are beginning to see it in places like uh, India and Indonesia, but uh, that's what's missing. I absolutely agree. And I, I think uh, Europe and, and, and China are perfect examples. Uh, in, in the sense that, look, political structural reform is unpopular. It's politically unpopular and monetary easing for lots of different reasons uh, has had minimal costs in the last few years. And so uh, what we saw at least in China this week was the pushing back of, of the urgency of structural reforms uh, in favor of, of just keeping the economy, economy churning. Which asset classes is, in terms of equities actually has the real room uh, to see big gains? I, look, I, I think uh, um, I, I think uh, cyclical equities in Europe are, are underowned. Um, I think uh, you know, along with the news that we're seeing in the bond market, defensive equities in in the U.S. and, and in Europe are, are are pretty well bid. And so that's things like uh, real estate, like utilities, really yieldy types of plays. Mm. Um, and so this can only go on for so long until you know, as, as I mentioned, I think when when yields start to come back up you're going to start to see a washout of, of those positions. And, and Very quickly, you expected the bomb bubble to burst. When is that going to happen? This is the, it's a historic moment in right. light of the fact that German bonds are actually starting to yield lower than even what you see with Japanese government bonds. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I actually think this week was a pretty seminal moment. And um, uh, you got me on camera now saying it, but I, I think uh, <laughs> this, was, this was the week that, that the market really pushed back on, on central banks. And, and um, 
and, and this is probably about as low as we're going to get. When's it going to change and when's it going to start going up materially? I, I don't, uh, and see that's the thing, I, I don't think the inflationary pressure is there to, to make the ascent as rapid as the descent. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think it's, it's, we're now in a, in, a, in a bottoming situation where uh, it's safe for investors to begin rotating back into cyclical, cyclical things like equities. So as opposed to lower for longer, it's low forever? Uh, I think it's a uh, uh, low but slowly inching up for a very long time. Okay, so at least that's what the positioning is telling you. Vonda Securities there. Eric Liu, really appreciate it. And our guest host, uh, Steve from Javelin Wealth Management, really appreciate it as well. We'll do this Thank again you. next time, gentlemen.